Therefore, we will need to go and gather some materials. Pine is a great wood for this project, but there is not much pine around me this size, so I will be using hazel. Hazel also works great. We need it to be our height, or maybe a little bit longer, but not less. And on the smaller size, we need it to be uh, pinky thick. And uh, it has to be as straight as possible. After we harvest 10 pieces of such wood, next step is to uh, start carving and get rid of the bark from all of the sticks. After all of the carving is done, we need to make a notch on the bottom about one inch from the end on all of our 10 sticks. So after we have notched all of the 10 sticks, we take five, put them together. We then we take some cordage, I am using paracord here. Uh, we wrap uh, some paracord uh, around one stick, make three knots. Uh, then uh, we uh, wrap the cordage around the next stick, then three knots and so on till the end. So after we are done making the bottom side, then we go to the other side, take all of these five sticks together and wrap some cordage around it. I made uh, three half notches and uh, burned the ends of the paracord together. I also had some zip ties with me and I uh, used the zip tie for extra protection and extra strength. So after we have tied the bottom side and after we have tied the top side, we need to find or carve two pieces of wood which will be about a thumb to pinky in length. Then we need to put the snowshoe on our hand to find where the center of gravity is. Then we place uh, one piece of wood there and tie it. Then uh, we need to do the measuring. So after we have tied the piece of wood uh, on the place where the center of gravity is, we put our foot on it. And then we put the other piece of wood uh, on the place where our toes are resting and uh, we tie it there. We did it this way because when we will be walking we want our uh, tips of the snowshoes to be uh, raised up and not pushed down in the ground. I carved out these notches so that when we uh, tie the cordage around it, uh, it will, will be more sturdy and it won't be uh, slipping around the uh, snowshoe. So as you guys can see both of our snowshoes are ready. Uh, I have used zip ties because something really stupid happened to me. I just realized that I don't have enough cordage uh, to, tie, to tie down all of the sticks to the snowshoes. So that's why I use zip ties, but I will be changing them with paracord when I arrive home. Then we need to make an improvised jig uh, to uh, bend the tips of the snowshoe so that uh, they don't get stuck in the ground when we will be walking with it in the snow. So the last step is to attach our uh, snowshoes to our boots. Let's see how to make that now. So to tie our boots to the snowshoe, we take our cordage, put it around the front stick, do the same thing on the other side. Like this. Then we put our foot in this loop. Then we take these two pieces of rope, tuck it under the rope which is on our foot, tighten it really hard, spin these two, uh, spin these two ropes, put it around our leg and tie it like that. and we are all ready to go.
So my primary knife in most cases is usually one of these two. So this first one is the Qdemon MT5. I just love this knife. Uh, full flat grind. It has a uh, very sharp edge. I always uh, sharpen it and uh, strop it. It is very tough, has a nice 90 degree spine, even more, I think it is even more than 90 degrees, so it uh, catches the ferro rod very easily and makes some amazing sparks. And it comes, it didn't, ca it didn't came with this sheath, but I made this sheath custom for it, for myself, as you see. The sheath which uh, comes with it is not bad, but it has a small belt loop, so uh, for my big belt I made this uh, custom sheath because of that and I think it came out just great. It is wet formed as you see, so when you put it in it has that kind of snap. And the second knife, of course, is the all famous Mora Heavy Duty. As you see it is also mirror polished. It has quite a patina and even a little bit of rust from winter when I forgot to uh, clean it. I'm a really big fan of this knife. I also uh, filed the back of it to make a 90 degree spine and now it can strike a fair rod. Now on the sheath, this plastic sheath also doesn't fit my big belt. So I made a small adapter, as you see, which goes on the plastic sheath and this way. It can fit my big belt. I have even made a video about it, so uh, if you haven't seen that, please click the card. For my fire starting options, I have two options. I, of course, I don't carry both of them at once. One is a ferro rod, which was handled by me very, very long time ago. I think maybe two years or even more than that. I have been uh, using this ferro rod a lot and it still has a lot of life in it. I also made this uh, belt loop, kind of sheath or holster for it. As you see, it is also well used. All of my gear is well used and uh, it is well trusted. The next fire starting option I have, this is the only thing that, uh, except the belt, which I have not made on my belt. It, I think this came from uh, flintandsteel.com. It is a flint and steel uh, fire kit, which comes with this uh, high carbon steel striker some flints, some jute twine and some char cloth. I have also used this a lot and I uh, flint and steel fire is my kind of favorite method of starting a fire. Then this belt loop for my hatchet actually is the first item that I ever made from leather. I think it was like three years ago and this is what that started my whole journey in leather making and in knife making also. When I realized that I needed some kind of option to carry my hatchet, I came to the decision to make it myself. As you see, it is by far not my beautifulest work, but as long as it works, who cares, dude? Then comes my Husqvarna hatchet. I have, uh, this was also my one of my first projects, a small uh, leather collar to protect the neck and the sheath. As you see, the sheath also has a welt, also not one of my most beautiful works, but it works great and it fits great. As you see, I always mirror polish all of my blades, at least I try to. And I am a very big fan of this hatchet. It is very cheap and I can recommend it uh, to any one of you, especially who are my subscribers. You guys have seen me use this for a long, long time and in many videos, winter, summer, it doesn't matter, hiking, bushcrafting or anything. It has, it is quite heavy because it has kind of quite thick profile and it is great for splitting, but it is also a great uh, uh, chopper because it is very sharp. The next item I have on my belt is this water bottle pouch. Half liter water bottle goes inside. 
This design, I think, was inspired by uh, Paul Drillas. He is an amazing Swedish bushcrafter. It is also adjustable, so you can put um, a bigger size bottle in it. And one thing uh, I still uh, couldn't manage to get is a nesting cup for this, so that they could uh, both go inside together. And it will be a great um, kind of water filtration, uh, hydration uh, system. But until I can get my stainless steel cup for this, I'm using this Uber 11 Kuxa, very high quality Kuxa, it is better than my older one, so this is my primary one now. It has a small carabiner and I usually hang it from my belt loop, or in this case on this D-ring on my pants, and it doesn't bother me a lot. And when I need it, if I uh, come to a water source or something, I can just take it off and drink water. So if you don't have a Kuxa, another option is to get this kind of horn. This is my father's horn, which I was using until I got the kuksa. It has a hole in the middle, I mean in the bottom, so you can attach some cordage and can hang it from your belt or something. As you see, it is a very old uh, horn. It is from 1979 and says Mamuka, which is my father's name. So that is an also great option. The next item on my belt is the Paco Laplander. You guys have also seen this saw with me for years now. I have used and abused it. And it is really a bulletproof folding saw. And I, until I can afford the silky saw, this works great. This sheath, I made it after I realized that I needed some kind of option to uh, carry the saw with me. So as you see, it is saddle stitched all the way. It has a dangler sheath with two snaps so that you can uh, remove it uh, from your belt if it is an emergency or if you want, don't want to take off your belt completely. Now one of the latest uh, items which I added on my belt kit is this uh, dump pouch which I realized that I need a lot in, when I'm out in the woods. It opens like this, it has two snaps and when you open this a really big pouch comes out as you see. This dump pouch, I find it very useful. If I'm walking in the woods, I always have this on my belt last few months. Uh, because, for example, if I'm looking for some firewood, I will put in some kindling. Or if I'm looking for some mushrooms, I can put in some mushrooms or strawberries or berries or millions of stuff which you meet on the trail. Uh, you can collect it right here if you, want to, if you don't want to uh, kind of make your pockets dirty and stuff. When you are done, when you are back to camp, you just fold it like this. And as you see, it gets very small and it doesn't bother, bother you at all. Just like that. On the back side, it has a big belt loop, which goes on my big belt. Speaking about belts, my belt has not changed. This is the old Soviet Russian officer belt. It is very durable quite high quality even though it is like at least 30 years old. I would recommend covering uh, any leather items which you have, especially I always cover the items uh, which I make with some natural beeswax when I make them. And when I use them a lot, then of course I uh, cover it with another coat of beeswax because that makes it waterproof and that kind of uh, brings back the oils in leather and it will uh, last you a whole, whole lot longer. Now, of course, this is a lot of gear and I don't carry it at once on my belt, but it really depends on the kit. For example, if I'm on a day hike or if I'm on a multiple day trip or if I'm on a kind of scouting mission, finding some nice places for overnighters and stuff in the woods.
so guys I have gathered everything what we need so let's I'll give you a little bit kind of rundown so you will need 10 pieces of have flexible long sticks which will which will be about a little bit longer than you are and which have to be not thicker than your thumb on the bottom and not thinner than your pinky at the end and they have to be flexible so I have gathered a few hazels and a few beech trees so that's for our mattress now then we need two kind of a little bit over wrist thick pieces which will be which will go one under your legs and one under your neck and they have to be in length so that you can fit perfectly on them then we need four long pieces which will be the main base part of the bed which will be a little bit longer than you are and they have to be a little bit over wrist thick and they have to be strong enough to handle you and the two main things for which I spent a little bit over one hour you know, harvesting this two big pieces which will be the base part which goes on the ground of your bed and you don't have to spend so much time gathering this you, this bed can be done in a survival situation also as you know if you are off the ground for like four inches well then all of the uh, uh, cold from the ground is eliminated and no uh, heat is uh, wasted from you to and going to the ground so uh, a bed is a uh, more important than roof on your top and sometimes many people uh, just uh, when they when they are making shelters in a survival situation I'm not in a survival situation I'm just building this I have a lot of time and I'm building this for a long term kind of shelter so I, I'm taking my time harvesting all of this because I am not in a rush but if you are in a survival situation uh, it is more important to be insulated from the ground than from the air because if you are insulated from the ground a little uh, fire long fire will help you to survive, survive the night even if it's snowing on you or a little bit raining and then you have to build the roof it, that's in survival situation but now let's get started so first we will have to put these two big pieces then we need to put two long pieces on the top of them then we put these two pieces and then we put the other two pieces on the top of that so now I will show you Just like that, the base of our shelter is ready. Then we need to measure. We don't take any kind of stick and put it next to us. And it should be like this. So, and now, this is the size from my knees to my neck. And now, I will put the stick and I will know where to put these two cross pieces just like that that should be perfect then we'll put our then we take our big pieces and put it on top of it like this and we'll take another piece and put it on this side 
Just like that. Then we need to lash these two pieces together. For this, we will need to make a jam knot. To make a jam knot, you will make one knot on one end of your paracord. Take the other end and make a half hitch on it. Like this. Like this. Now we can tighten it down. Like this. Before we tighten it all the way, we make sure we take this paracord and put it under this jam knot so that we can secure it after we are done tightening it. Just like that, then we put this other side and make a half hitch and we secure it that way. Just like that. Cover this stick so that with something so that you don't slip between it and fall down and break the sticks and break the bed. So I will be using some spruce boughs to cover this so that I will have more cushion and it will be more comfortable. Now if you are not in the spruce country, you can use the twigs of willow. You have to put it in the same manner as I will put the pine, as I put the spruce boughs. Just you know, make sure you uh, gather only the willow tips of the willows, like about this length and make a little kind of make a little kind of bunches and put it like this on diagonal so now to put this spruce boughs you have to put it on a 45 degree angle so that it is in a 45 degree angle to this stick like this like this and then we put the other one on a 45 degree angle or from the other side, like this. And then we continue to come down with that manner. And just like that, for now, that should be enough. It may look like a lot, but it is really not a lot because when we will squish it down, it will be about like this. So, even if we added more, it would be even better. So now let's give the bed a try. Oh. oh. Man, it feels like a home mattress and it feels really comfortable. Man, it is just great and I'll for sure spend the night here because it feels just great, man. Morse Kohensky is a real genius and by figuring out how to build such a comfortable bed, he did a really great job. He's an amazing man and we can learn a lot from him.
Today I will show you how to turn this into this. Here is everything we will need. First of all, two containers like this. These are stainless steel. A little bit of threaded rod. You can find it in your local hardware store or you can make it by yourself if you have the right tools. We will need a little bit amount of sheet metal. A few nuts and bolts like this. Regular drill. And one special tool which you may or may not have at home is this rivet maker. It has rivets like this. You put it in two pieces of sheet metal and it rivets them together. We will see how that works in a few minutes. And that's it. This is everything we will need to make a backpacking wood stove for our bushcraft trips in the winter. Sorry, completely forgot to mention that you will need some kind of method to cut metal with. You can either use a hacksaw or an angle grinder, I will be using both. Uh, if you will be using a hacksaw, I would recommend a good quality blade, something like a B-metal blade, which are very sharp, very rigid and very high quality for cutting this stainless steel. To cut out this piece, uh, I recommend drilling four holes in the corners with uh, the size of drill bit which is your hacksaw blade and then you can install the hacksaw blade inside and cut it that way. Now to speed up the process I will be using an angle grinder. If you have this then it is not a problem. If you don't have an angle grinder you can do the method which I just told you. And if you have an angle grinder, make sure to wear eye protection and also a respirator would be good.
Now that we made two holes on both sides, I cut out small piece like this from sheet metal. I put, I lined the holes so that when this is riveted in, there is a little space over here left and this way we will close the door. Now we take the riveting tool, you put the rivet inside, put the metal in the way you want it to be, put the rivet inside and squeeze the tool. One, it takes a few squeezes. Not much left now. And just like that we have a rivet. Here's how it will look from the inside. Now I used an angle grinder to do all of the cutting around the circle. <coughs> I uh, measured it 8 centimeters in diameter and made many cuts. You can do the same for example with a drill, just drill a hole around it. But this was easier for me so that's why I did it. Now it is a matter of breaking it off and smoothing it with a hammer. Now I realized in the middle way that I was doing it wrong. I had to uh, push it, punch it on the outside so that all of the teeth come on this side. And then I could cut it off with an angle grinder or with a hacksaw if you have it. Now it's just a matter of hammering all of this down and then putting the pipe in. Now let's make a stove damper, if you don't know stove damper is the thing that controls the uh, fire inside, so this goes in the pipe, uh, I took the sheet metal, cut out in the size uh, a little bit smaller than the pipe, made two cuts on each side and put holes which will take the uh, threaded rod. Now let's fit the rod inside, it has a snug fit, so it doesn't move freely, let's bend it like this let's bend the other side as well like that let's fit this inside now just like that so now when i thread it it isn't easy to move and when we put this inside the pipe, we can control the heat. Now speaking about pipes, you really have two options. One of them being buy a piece of sheet metal like this. I think uh, this is 24 gauge. Maybe ga gauging is different where you live, but this is the thinnest stuff I could get. You can go even thinner. And uh, uh, one option for, for a pipe would be rolling this on the size that you want. 
put like a wire around it to uh, secure it on that size and put the um, uh, pipe like that on the stove. Uh, they do um, backpacking stoves like that where they use titanium sheets and st stuff like that which is very like paperweight and very strong. Uh, so that would be one option and uh, the second option is more lazy option which I did. I bought this piece of sheet metal and I took it to, a, um, uh, to the guy who works on sheet metal. I had him make four pieces like this and you won't believe what it cost. It just cost one dollar to make one piece. So for four pieces it was four dollars. I gave the guy five dollars and that was it. Of course I uh, took my uh, sheet metal to him and he made he made a uh, ready pipe. Uh, one, size, one side has a bit bigger and the other side is a little bit smaller. He made it in like 10 minutes so I'm sure you can uh, take it to uh, your local guy who works on sheet metal and it will be very cheap to make it because there is nothing difficult. Even uh, you can make this at home. They just have already made jigs uh, so uh, to make these bands on the exact size that you want. Uh, and uh, other than that, that there is no uh, hard thing about it really. You can make this at home as well. So I went with that method. Had the uh, professional guy made the pipe for me. And uh, on the pipe which will uh, sit in the um, uh, wood stove, I made uh, two holes. I made two holes uh, so that the um, uh, smoke, the smoke stove damper will go inside these holes. Now, in case you are wondering. Uh, how this pipe is made and you want to save that few dollars uh, the top side is bent inside from bottom as you see and the bottom side is bent like this so when the two pieces meet they lock together like this and they don't come undone then you take just a punch and punch it or maybe a nail or it doesn't matter so that they stay together and uh, this stopper is not necessary but you can make it by yourself as well it is a lot easier to take it to a professional because they already have the jigs made which bend this so it is very easy I hope you can see it so I have finished threading it inside and as you see it works now on this side I jammed two of these butterfly wings to turn it and as you see it works great now let's put this inside the stove and I think we are ready to rock and roll And just like that we have a working stove. Here is the look from inside of the pipe. And as you see the damper is working. So guys just like that the project is finished now all it is left to do is to try it out on a trip on a two-day trip or maybe even more I'm planning to take this wood stove with me 
to go hot tent, hot tent camping uh, in the mountains in deep snow where there is minus 10 20 degrees at night so this will help a lot uh, now let's talk about the costs uh, the whole project didn't cost more than $20 uh, I picked up uh, these containers for uh, 7 or $8 a piece I picked up uh, all of the sheet metal for like $4 and all of the rest were like $1 or $2 so uh, that is very uh, cheap project and uh, you get, get a lot of value if you put a little bit of work if you want my advice I would recommend using uh, cobalt drill bits to uh, drill the holes because this is stainless steel but even if you don't have that special drill bits regular drill bits will work well uh, if you put some tap oil and go slow don't rush it because you will overheat it like I did it over here when I was making the big hole but uh, if you go slow you won't have any problems so if you like this video please give it a thumbs up subscribe to my youtube channel Click that bell icon to get notified for more awesome videos, new videos coming every Friday 2 p.m. Eastern Time. Make sure to check out my next trip video, it will be somewhere in here. And um, hope to see you guys in the outdoors. Take care and have a nice day.